right. A little bit more about the uh, link system, and then I'll let you guys work on the labs like you've been working on them. Okay, so we have all of those cells that are present for this system to help with, you know, our immunity, but that's kind of a that, that's kind of a term that you're going to find should apply to antibodies, okay? But in helping fight off pathogens, we've got a bunch of cells that are present to help us do this. So we call our, you know, we have our lymphatic tissue, and this is where we get an aggregation of lymphocytes, those cells, and we're going to find them in connective tissue, we're going to find them in mucous membranes, we're going to find them in various organs. And the goal is to hopefully have our cells that can be ready for parts of our first and second defense. All right, and the first of course being our skin. When we talk about this lymphatic tissue, we're going to say that we have diffuse lymphatic tissue. What does kind of diffuse mean? What does that term mean? If something is called diffuse, Nate? No? Okay. She said something. Oh, you're thinking about diffusion. But that's okay. Because when we think of something diffuse, it is sort of like spread out, okay? So it's, a, it's like this not totally in perfect alignment almost, okay? It's very diffuse within something. So this is where lymphocytes are just kind of scattered about. All right, and they are really present, those cells, because that lymphocyte, the white cells, okay, they're present in, for example, body passages open to the exterior of the body. Any opening we have to the outside environment is lined by these mucous membranes. And in these mucous membranes, they have a bunch of these lymphocytes. Why? Can you say that again? Anything for our body that is open to the exterior environment is lined by mucous membranes. And in these mucous membranes are found a bunch of these lymphocytes. Why? Is that <laughs> uh, what are we doing? They're interacting with the invaders. Invaders. Everything is out here. It's trying its best to invade. I mean, for example, look at the stuff flying around and the light right there coming off of the LCD projector. Have y'all ever paid attention to that? Mm -hmm. Where do you think it's going? It's not no. logs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> We've got all these things that are open to the exterior environment. And y'all know that, like, the majority of that's skin cells. Mm -hmm. All right? I mean, no, you got to love it, right? <laughs> so, we've got all this stuff. <laughs> but, at the same time, we touch door handles. We touch everything. We eat. We wipe our eyes. We brush, you know, we scratch our... Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? Okay? And we are basically... <laughs> what's she saying? Do what, Minnie? <laughs> um, and so, you know, if you think about it, we, our bodies, this is the thing about it, 
They are a perfect host. So any of the stuff that we touch or bring to it, it's a perfect host. So if we've got these openings, well, these lymphocytes, they're very, they're, they're called malt, mucus associated lymphatic tissue. Okay, it's this, they call it malt. And basically we've got these cells ready to defend the body. They're doing that a lot, 24 seven, because all these, a lot of these holes stay open. Then we're gonna have dense tissue lymphatic nodules. These are areas where lymphocytes and macrophages, because macrophages like to do their job. They like to try to catch stuff and eat it. They're going to be found in areas like my lymph nodes, where my lymph has got to pass through, my tonsils, that's a great place for them to be because of everything that gets introduced by way of the mouth. And then, like I said, my appendix, which we can live without. When we look at the intestines, we're going to find in the ileum and the distal portion of the small intestines some special patches. And they're called Peyer's patches because they are going to be these lymphocytes that are working really hard to fight any of these um, pathogens that get introduced by way of our food and so forth. So they're, they're found in the digest within the abdominal area. Our lymphatic organs, they have a very well-defined anatomical site and most likely connective tissue capsules, i.e. lymph nodes, spleen. Okay, very well defined organs of this system. Our red bone marrow is part of it because, do you guys remember those colony forming units that give rise to like the red blood cells, the lymphocytes, monocytes, all that sort of stuff. We need that. Our thymus gland is considered a part of this system. Even though the thymus gland is in the endocrine system. So it's considered one of those organs that's found in more than one system. This is where the thymocoitin, when the T cells go there and they get exposed to it, they develop into the T cell that we know, okay, and can migrate usually most often to those uh, lymph nodes. Our lymph nodes, they're very numerous. Like I tried to show at the beginning of the class, one-way fluid flow and concentrated in areas of the body. On average, we have about 450. Doesn't sound like a whole lot, okay? But eh, it sort of is when you think about it only being in the trunk. There are two functions. Cleanse lymph and provide the site of activation for T cells and B cells. That's what our lymph nodes are gonna do. They have the cortex and the medulla. If you remember, the medulla is always the inner portion. Cortex is the outer. The medulla is where I find that particular tissue, where it looks like the webbing and the cells can actually, like the T cells, they just simply go in there and wait, okay? Other stuff that might be coming through the fluid can get stuck in the branches and taken care of by the cells in the medulla. Something such as a macrophage that would be in the lymph node and could simply eat the foreign particle. The cortex, we're going to see that it contains lymphatic nodules. 
So on that outer portion of a lymph node, little nodules that will be present. This is where my B cells get to multiply. They differentiate into what they're called up to go fight, okay? And this is where they would multiply. And then some B cells form memories. So they're ready the next time that invader tries to come back. In our tonsils, we're going to find that there are patches of lymphatic tissue. Anybody in here ever had to have them removed? Your tonsils removed? They try not to do that a lot now. When I was growing up, uh, especially like in my parents' generation and that sort of thing, they did that a lot, is remove the tonsils. But now we know how important they are. So I think they have that as like a last resort now for removing um, the tonsils. Hmm. I think they'll only take out one mark. Oh, they can't? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I've got my own agony taken out when I was two. And not the and not my the tonsils? Okay. I used to stop breathing when I was three. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine that would require that to be done. But yeah, so the tonsils and usually what happened is I think early on it was difficult to differentiate the tissue. And now they're better at that, and they can do one or the other. So it's important because they are lymph-associated. They are immune-associated. So they're important to keep. We're going to find that on the tonsils, they have crypts. So if this is my tonsil, they'll have little crypts in them. And these little pits, okay, have nodules. We have our pharyngeal, which are known as the adenoids, our palatine, and lingual. Did y'all know we had this many? I know, it's kind of cool. So, the adenoids, those are going to be close to our nasal cavity, we're going to see palatine and lingual closer to the mouth area, the oral cavity. And then our spleen. Our spleen is the largest of these lymphatic organs. We're going to find it contains what they call red pulp and white pulp. Because we've got the red blood cells, we've got the white cells. Red pulp. In that spleen, remember sinus is a cavity, okay? So in the spleen that we're going to find, we're going to see the red pulp of it be where we have our erythrocytes. Do you happen to remember what's going on with the erythrocytes at that point in the spleen? Do it Yes, because the spleen, once again, is going to be reticular tissue. And these red blood cells, because they only have a lifespan of about 120 days. And if you think about it, one red blood cell is making a trip around the body about once every minute. So if you do the math, which I'm not going to try, okay, but if you do the math, one circuit every minute of every day for the 120 days. By the time it does that, it gets older and older. It's getting a little, because you know it doesn't have any more organelles, it can't do any repair or anything. It's getting a little wore out. And eventually, as it makes it through the spleen, it'll get caught on one of those webs and break apart. And that red blood cell is getting broken down, parts we can use, we return, the other parts are getting taken care of. We're going to excrete them out. In the white pulp, we're going to find sleeves of lymphocytes, these macrophages, 
There, we're going to have them along that splenic artery because the spleen is a very 